bins are a highly recognized symbol as you drive through the countryside. For farmers who place their corn and grain in them after harvest this process seems routine and simple enough. Unfortunately, grain bins can quickly become death traps for you and your laborers, this is because safety around grain bins can easily be overlooked during the busy harvest season. It's very important to make a thorough assessment of the potential dangers in the grain bin before you enter it. Once you are aware of the risks you will be less likely to have injuries and you could possibly prevent a fatality. Everyone working on your farm should be trained in grain bin safety and how to respond in an emergency. By itself, a single kernel of corn does not look too dangerous or threatening, but multiplied by thousands and millions, kernels of corn have the power to kill. This course will help identify a few common farm hazards and cover some key objectives of grain bin awareness. We must all begin to take positive actions to help us overcome grain bin and farm accidents. There's almost no help for family farms when it comes to training people in grain bin safety. Farmers know the dangers, but desperation and familiarity force them inside their own silos. The family farm is where the incidences are occurring. In this course, we will be covering information on the identification of hazards, grain dynamics, as well as preventing accidents in the grain bin. Farm hazards can include the following, human factors, electrical, mechanical, and environmental. Age can play a role in grain bin and farm-related accidents, arrogance or an overconfidence accompanied with a, it won't happen to me attitude can significantly increase the risk of injury. As we age, our memories can tend to fade, and that is not always from disease, repetitive work, and the constant revision of work can create unsafe habits. Our senses of hearing, sight, smell and touch can be altered due to age. A calloused hand may have a loss of sensation. Vision may change over time, and hearing can diminish increasing the dangers. Capacity isn't about being smart enough, it's about knowing enough, and being in your right mind to work. Working with new equipment or not having a full understanding of the dangers of what you're doing can be deadly. Having your mind right to work is very important, being stressed or distracted only invites injury. So know your limits, if it's too heavy you must get help even though moving and lifting it yourself may be faster. It reduces the risk substantially to use another person or mechanical device to lift it. During crop season it's easy to get caught up in, I have to get this in before they do or I have to get this out before all the rains. Therefore, working multiple days and through the night is more common, than ever. However, the risk of injury and poor judgment increases with the setting sun. The next farm hazard with grain bins is that of electrical. Some safety rules for power line safety are. Remember that large equipment and grain bins near overhead power lines are an electrical hazard. When constructing new grain bins, Keep it a safe distance from power lines. The National Electric Safety Code sets minimum clearances around grain bins. It requires at least 18 feet above the highest point on a grain bin. Know that your utility company may have some requirements so discuss with your utility company about underground installation for your power lines. Never attempt to raise a power line, even if it's just for more clearance, and never move a power line. If you have any lines sagging or need them moved, contact your utility company. Always use a wooden or fiberglass ladder, not metal, when working around the grain bin. If there is a down power line, call the utility company, don't go near it. The next hazard on the farm, is a ground fault circuit interrupter. A farm's electrical system is not maintenance free, in fact they require regular attention. Farm electrical systems can deteriorate at a faster rate than residential structures due to high exposure moisture, and overuse, the constant changes to power demands, and the need for more outlet locations, can quickly overwhelm an older system. The breaker panel is one of the most common areas of electrical failure, current flow through worn, corroded or loose connections can cause the circuit breakers to trip unexpectedly. Replace worn out electrical panel boxes to prevent fire, and electrical overload. Typically, circuit breakers do not need to be replaced unless they are worn out. The previous picture illustrated a worn out circuit breaker. Always, replace a circuit breaker if it is hot to touch, has a burning smell, or you can see visual damage such as black or burned material or frayed wires.
quality circuit breakers and panels that are properly installed should last a long time. Panel circuit breakers and GFI, ground fault interrupters, are common in newer farms and can make life simpler. Especially when you add to your shop or for your increased electricity needs. A GFI or circuit panel protects the electrical system and structure by cutting off electricity as soon as the load gets to be too much. Old fuses will blow and wires will burn if the maximum electrical load is exceeded. The main advantage to circuit breakers and GFI interrupters is that they can be reset and a circuit breaker can easily be added to expand the panel. The next section will review the farm hazards of fall risk and entanglement. As far as farm hazards fall risk involves some of the following. Working in heights or working around silos or tractors. Falls are the most common type of accidental injury needing hospital treatment among farmers aged over 55 years. Broken bones are the most common non-fatal injury, with bones of the legs and arms at greatest risk. Compared to younger farmers, those aged over 75 years are more likely to die from a fall. Tripping on uneven surfaces or falling into uncovered wells. Some personal risk factors include Age, if you are over 55 years of age you are at an increased risk. If you have had a recent history of falls. If you are mixing medications you are at a risk for falling. You may have eyesight problems such as blurred or double vision, reduced sight or poor night vision. And you might have a chronic disease such as osteoporosis, diabetes, arthritis or Parkinson's disease. What type of equipment causes such entanglement accidents? The types of equipment that classically causes such farm work injuries are the power takeoff shafts on tractors and on the gears and sprockets of ancillary equipment such as feed mixers. Other equipment that can be dangerous includes belts and pulleys in roller mills and pasture toppers and rotating machine parts in such farm work equipment as a power tether or harrow. To prevent entanglement wear the proper clothing. Some questions to ask yourself when working on a farm. Are there items that should be replaced because of holes and rips? Are certain garments simply unsuitable for the job? Do certain items require modification to make them safe? Get rid of items that are baggy, torn or too long. Make it a habit to button up and zip up. Eliminate drawstrings and other dangling add-ons. Always wear slip-resistant safety footwear. Keep long hair tied up and under your hat. Use appropriate personal protective equipment. Base your selection of protective devices on the hazards presented by the job, and by precautions printed on product labels. The next section will look at environmental hazards, and how the weather and crop dynamics, can play a part in creating a hazard for farmers with grain bin storage. Working in extreme temperatures, hot or cold inside a grain bin can inundate the body's temperature control system. When the body is unable to warm or cool itself properly, illness can result. Heat and cold stress can contribute to adverse health effects that range in severity from discomfort to death. Heat-related illnesses can be potentially dangerous and life-threatening to those individuals in a farming community but they can be prevented. When working in a grain bin in the heat, drink plenty of water before and during work activities, take breaks in a shaded area, pace yourself, and gradually adjust to working in the heat. After extended rains last fall, corn and soybeans may have been stored, at a higher moisture content than usual. This moisture, along with the resulting molds can lead to grain and particularly, soybeans going out of condition and clogging or crusting in the bin. It may be tempting to enter the bin to break the crust and facilitate grain movement, but it is unsafe and can be life-threatening. On Saturday afternoon, February 9th, a Nebraska City farmer and another man were loading out their third truck of soybeans from a farm near Unadilla. When the flow of beans to the auger stopped, the farmer entered the grain bin to loosen the bridged beans. Unfortunately, he became entrapped in the grain and when he didn't respond to calls from outside the bin, rescue workers from three towns were called. They cut into the bin perimeter to empty the grain, but unfortunately, it was too late to save the farmer's life. In less than a minute of becoming entrapped, a person can become engulfed in grain and suffocate. With so much to think about during harvest, some details can easily get overlooked. Don't let mycotoxins be one of them. Mycotoxins can be extremely harmful to humans and animals. They are known to disrupt the synthesis of DNA, RNA and proteins, and can impair animal health, even causing death. The metabolites can be passed through animal products, such as milk. These mycotoxins can affect humans at different levels of severity, respiratory distress, coughing, sneezing, 
and in some cases anaphylaxis, mycotoxins can also have a severe economic impact. They reduce the crop value from the restricted use of contaminated grain and are a cause of rejection of unacceptable dry distillers grains. Harvest moisture and handling can also influence grain infection. Higher grain moisture, improper storage and damaged kernels can increase the likelihood of mycotoxins in the grain. Entrapment, how does it happen? People can become caught or trapped in grain in three different ways, the collapse of bridged grain, the collapse of a vertical wall of grain, and entrapment in flowing grain. People who work with grain, loading it, unloading it, and moving it from bin to bin, need to know about the hazards of flowing grain and how to prevent a grain entrapment situation. The Collapse of Bridged Grain Grain can become bridged when it is moldy, high in moisture content, or in poor condition, together and form a crust which may be self-supporting. This gives a false indication that it is safe to stand on the surface of the grain. The worker cannot tell if there is grain under the crust or not. A hollow cavity will form under crusted grain when some of the grain has been removed from the bin. The surface over this cavity is not strong enough to support the weight of a person, and as the person walks onto the grain, the bridge of crusted grain will collapse. The victim instantly falls into the cavity, along with the grain and is usually buried under several feet of grain. It will be very difficult to determine exactly where the victim is. A few safety precautions for entrapment with the collapse of bridged grain are Stop the auger and do not go into the bin. Instead look for a funnel shape at the surface of the grain mass after some grain has been removed. If the surface looks undisturbed and no grain has funneled down toward the auger, then possibly it has bridged and there may be a cavity under the surface. Do not enter the bin to break the bridge loose or attempt to stand on the grain. From outside of the bin use a pole or other object to break the bridge causing it to collapse. Tie the pole or other object to a rope, which is tied to the bin so you can retrieve it if you drop it. If the surface is disturbed and shows evidence of the grain flowing down to the auger then a chunk of crusted grain has probably moved down to the auger and blocked off the flow of grain. This situation is dangerous if you enter the bin because the grain at the top of the funnel will break loose and avalanche down. Prevent grain bridging by storing grain in good condition and avoiding spoilage, which leads to crusted grain. In entrapment with the collapse of a vertical mass of grain. This is when grain can set up, in a large mass, against the bin wall or in various formations. When it has been stored while in poor condition, the mass of grain can collapse, and avalanche down on workers who attempt to break it loose with shovels or other objects. There will be no warning, when it breaks loose and cascades down, the impact will knock workers off their feet, burying them in various positions. Individuals working in the bin can be buried almost instantly. If secondary avalanches are possible, it will be risky for rescue personnel to dig out the worker. The rest of the grain will have to be stabilized, or knocked down, so it is safe for rescue personnel to work. Here are some safety precautions, for the collapse of a vertical mass of grain. Do not enter a bin and try to break down grain which has set up in a large mass. Attempt to break up the grain mass either from the top of the bin with a long pole on a rope, or from outside of the bin, through the door, with a long pole. Entering the bin to do this work can cost you your life. Expect, and be prepared for, the grain mass to break free at any time and to cascade down. Prevent grain from setting up in the bin by storing grain in good condition and avoiding spoilage which leads to this problem. Flowing grain will not support the weight of a person. It will pull a person down and into the grain mass as it flows. The suction action is strong enough that a person cannot swim, climb, or walk against it and get out. Then as grain flows out of a bin the victim will be pulled down and under very quickly with little or no time to react. A person cannot be pulled from flowing grain without risk of injury to the spinal column if the grain is at waist level or higher, the grain will have a very strong grip on the body. Some dangerous flowing grain situations are, grain flowing downward in a bin. Grain flowing downward out of a rail car, truck or wagon box, and grain flowing downward in an auger pit. A few safety precautions for flowing grain entrapments are, never enter a grain bin without stopping the auger first and then using lockout tag out procedures to secure it. Use a key type of padlock to securely lock the switch for the auger in the off position. Attach a tag to the locked switch so that other people involved can positively identify it. Also never enter a grain bin alone. Have at least two people at the bin to assist in case problems arise.
use a safety harness or safety line when entering the bin. You may wonder, what is the force needed to lift a victim from the grain? The force of the grain acts on the body from all directions. The deeper the victim is engulfed, the greater the force acting on the body. The total force needed to lift the body from the grain, is equal to the force of the grain plus the weight of the victim. What is the angle of repose? When piled on a flat surface, dry bulk solids will naturally rest without slumping at a certain angle to the horizontal surface, called the angle of repose or slip angle. This angle varies greatly among the different types of granular materials. As such, numerous factors contribute to determining the angle of repose. Size of individual pieces The size of corn kernels differs greatly from that of individual oats. Material with small pieces will have a smaller angle of repose, and will more easily fill any container it's placed in. Friction between individual pieces Rough materials move slower, whereas smoother ones are much faster. Product moving at a steady pace up a 10 degree angle will be much more stable than if the material was moving quickly up a more angled slope. Material density Heavier individual pieces create more friction and lead to a more stable pile, this also impacts how quickly granular materials move. Conveyor Both the speed and angle of the conveyor will impact the angle of repose. Angle of repose is a term used when grain is stored in a container. It is a reference used to determine if safe entry can be made into a grain storage bin. When grain is in good condition the angle forms naturally. The angle of repose during the unloading process is most critical. For corn in good condition the natural angle of repose ranges from 21.5 to 23 degrees, for soybeans it is 25 to 27 degrees and for wheat it is 27 to 28 degrees. These angles would be considered safe to make entry into a bin. When grain goes out of condition these angles can increase and pose a dangerous condition in a bin that can require special precautions when entering a storage container. Silo gas forms after chopped grain forages are harvested, placed into storage and begin to ferment. Silo gas is more commonly associated with corn silage but can also occur with hay crop silages. Nitrogen dioxide is one of the gases that are present in silo gas. When inhaled, nitrogen dioxide can cause burning and scarring of the lungs and respiratory system. Symptoms of exposure to silo gas include coughing, burning, chills, fever and nausea. Farmers who suspect that they have been exposed to silo gas should seek medical assistance immediately. As we look at prevention in a grain bin emergency we focus on loading and offloading grain, lockout tag out, and partnering. Here are some important safety precautions regarding loading and offloading grain. Keep grain bins off limits to children or unauthorized personnel. You should barricade or lock up the grain bins. Keep your portable ladders away from these areas to prevent an accident, and ladders should be at least 7 feet off the ground. Other safety precautions are to lock out the power supply on all uploading mechanisms, as serious injuries could occur if someone is in the grain bin when the unloader starts up by accident, which is why it is very important to be able to lock the switch off to grain bin unloaders. The final tip is if the job can be done without entering the structure. Do it. Lockout tagout refers to specific practices and procedures to safeguard employees, from the unexpected energization or startup of machinery and equipment, or the release of hazardous energy during service or maintenance activities. Lockout devices hold energy isolation devices in a safe or off position. The chart to the right shows the amount of injuries and fatalities, and the amount of workdays lost while recovering from an accident. An effective lockout tagout program should include the following eight steps. Step 1, Detailed Procedures for Equipment Step 2, Notify Affected Employees Step 3, Shut Down Equipment Properly Step 4, Disconnect All Primary Energy Sources Step 5, Address All Secondary Sources Step 6, Verify the Lockout Step 7, Keep it in force during shift changes And Step 8, Bring the Equipment Back Online Never Enter a Grain Bin Alone have at least two people ready to assist in case of problems. Be sure you can hear and see one another. Position one of the observers, who is equipped to help and perform rescue operations, outside the bin. Use the safety harness and line when entering a grain bin. We would like to sincerely thank our partners for providing us the tools and resources to bring you this online learning program. 
Without their involvement and support for this educational series it would not have been possible. This concludes Grain Bin Awareness. Farming is one of the most dangerous professions in the United States, but through awareness and education, we can work together to decrease the number of preventable accidents, injuries, and deaths. Thank you for watching Grain Bin Awareness. This presentation brought to you by Illinois Fire Service Institute's Agriculture Rescue Program.